This video has been sponsored by Squarespace. I just want to start this video by saying, Audi TTs are surprisingly practical. So practical, in fact, I actually managed to fit a brand new TTRS bumper just in the back of it. Now, in the last video, we fitted the TTRS rear bumper to the car, and I did a little paintwork repair on it, and some of you guys weren't too fond of that. So I did a small repair on the lower section of this corner of the bumper, and it turned out pretty well considering I did it with a rattle cam, but some of you guys in the comments section were not fond of this. And I want to thank you for that, because you're then pushing me to get better at things that I'm not comfortable with. So in this video, I'm going to start by painting in the bonnet and also painting up my new TTRS front bumper. So in this video we'll be completing that TTRS body kit which we started in the last video. Now finding a TTRS front bumper alone is hard. There's not many about and the ones that are are very expensive so it was quite a challenge getting to this point. But we're here now and this one needs painting so the first thing to do is scotch over the full bumper to prepare it for primer and then once that's done we can lay some colour down. And it's not only the front bumper which needs doing as I already mentioned the on it also needs doing. There's a lot of damage all over it from brake fluid and lots of scratches too and I think it'd be a shame just to cover this over. I think we need to make this right especially with the bonnet being the key focus point of the car. It's the one that catches your eye the most. So the bumper is now prepped. That's a pretty easy one because it's a brand new bumper it just needs a light scotch and that should be good to go but the bonnet that's a slightly different story. Because this has been sat, stored underneath another car, getting scratched at the auction place, it needs painted over the whole thing, and also it needs some damage repairing from where it's had brake fluid drip on it, which has caused like a reaction in the paint. So there's a bit more prep needed on this than what was needed on the bumper. So with the bonnet, I think what I need to try and do is take it back to bare metal to make sure that there's no reacted paint on there anymore, and that any damage that's on there is completely removed. So I sand the worst bits with 120 grit on the DA, and and then the better bits on 240 grit on the DA. I've got to thank Josh at JB Paints, by the way, for letting me use his booth because I can't paint in my garage at home. It'll just completely ruin it. So having access to a spray booth was an absolute lifesaver here. If you can go and show him some support and go and follow his Instagram for us, that'd be much appreciated. But now the bonnet is prepped and completely sanded, I can start cleaning it down and getting it ready for that first coat of primer. Now I'm going to have to keep the camera out of the spray booth as much as I can because the last few times I've painted cars it's really made a mess of it so I want to try and avoid wrecking my nice new camera but I'm sure I can get one or two shots in there for you. So once the bonnet and the bumper were cleaned down we could then lay down those first coats of primer preparing them ready for the colour coat and straight away that is looking much better but now we can start mixing it up and this time you'll be glad to hear that I have actually got the correct colour code for this car. So once that's mixed up with thinners we can then pop it in the gun and start spraying some panels. So with a little bit of guidance from Josh I start by spraying the edges of the panel first and then working into the middle. I'm not aiming for complete coverage on the first coat because we'll be doing about two or three coats anyway so I just want to get a good amount of paint on there and then we can just build up layers and layers and layers until it's completely ready. Okay so we've got three coats of base on the bumper and also the bonnet. I haven't had the camera in here so I don't want to get covered over spray and ruin it but I think that's looking okay. Josh Rate it out of 10, honest. What have you done? Give it a solid, I'd go with a 7 out of seven. 10. It's a good rating. It's just a bit patchy. Right, okay. How do I make it less patchy? We can do a few more dust coats, a bit further away, drop coat. Yeah, I thought that. Like dust strikes. coats and drop coats. Now, because I have absolutely no idea what a dust coat or a drop coat is, Josh steps in at this point and does that for me and just finishes off that base coat layer. Then once that's done, we can lay on our first coat of clear, which looks like this, and then a second coat, and then possibly even a third coat, and then the bumper and the bonnet are painted. So the next thing we're going to do to the bonnet is wet sand it to remove any imperfections and just increase the finish ever so slightly. I'm not aiming for perfection because at the end of the day I'm going to be wrapping over it but it's definitely looked better than what it did before. Now some of you may or may not be aware that what I do for a living is detailing cars so doing stuff like this every single day. Now believe it or not the hardest part about that job isn't actually dealing with the cars it's getting the customers through the door and in this day and age the only way to do that is through the power of the internet or more specifically a website. And that that brings us on to Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. Squarespace is an online tool to help you build and run your own website. And whether you're trying to sell a physical product or a service, Squarespace can help you do exactly that. 
you can easily build and design a state-of-the-art website which can perfectly market you and your company and even set up an online store if you want to. Squarespace leaves you in control of your own website so you're not paying a third party every single time that you want to make an adjustment. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, the news gets even better. Using code ChrisSlicks or my link in the description, you can save yourself 10% off your first website or domain. If you guys can go and show them some love and support the people which support this channel, that'd be great. But for now, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Right, so we've got the new bumper here painted up and as you can see, it's not quite ready to go on the car. It's missing a few bits. So we need to get the grills in, we need to get the lower splitter in, we need to get the centre grill in and there's a few other bits to go with that. The first thing to go on is this silver kind of lower splitter. I quite like this in silver on a black car, but you know, I'm sure everyone's opinion's gonna differ. Let me know what you think. Do you think keep it silver or wrap it black? But anyway, once that's clipped in, then I can move on to the side grills. These are a little bit of a faff to get in. You kind of have to put them in in a certain way and they take a bit of force to try and get them to clip in properly, but they do get there in the end. I am being as gentle as I can be because the last thing I want to do at this point is break any clips or snap any of the plastic parts because that would be an absolute nightmare. But now that's on on both sides, we can now fit the sensor grill which clips in and screws in from the back and that is the front bumper completely assembled. Okay, the bumper is now more or less together. There's one trim which needs to go on, but I'm waiting for that to dry because I forgot to paint it, but it's now been painted. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to pull the car inside and get the bumper off. As far as front bumpers go, the TT is quite an easy one to get off. There's just two 10 mils in each wheel arch, some bolts underneath for the under tray, and then the ones that are visible from opening the bonnet. And then as soon as those are off, the bumper can come away from the car. All you've got to do then is disconnect the washer jets and the fog lights, and you should be good to go. One thing's for certain, I definitely won't miss that badgeless centre grill that's mounted on this bumper at the moment. I know some people like them, but they're just not for me. There's the old bumper off. Now we can look at fitting up this brand new one. And it, doesn't it just straight away look so much better? But the only thing that I wasn't happy with on this was the grill. It came with a, another badgeless grill, which I don't like. And I've gone and bought this kind of badge holder from eBay. Uh, I think it was about 50 quid, which just screws onto this badgeless grill and then completes the look of the front of the car. I'm still waiting for this last trim to dry, so I'm gonna put the bumper on, then put that trim on when it's on the car, and all should be gravy, but let's get this new bumper on. So the first thing I had to do was mount up the washer jets. Again, on this bumper, because it's brand new, I had to kind of open out the holes a little bit to make everything go into place nicely. But with two T20s in each one, those are mounted, and then the new washer jet covers could be clipped into the front of the bumper. Now, you may have also noticed the TTRS does not have fog lights, whereas the TTS does, so we've got to do something about that. Now you have two options here, you can either leave the bulbs plugged in and then just tuck them somewhere out of the way and just not use them, or you can do what I've done here and get some fog light delete kits which essentially trick the car into thinking that the bulb's still there even though it's not. So that way it stops any risk of accidentally turning them on and melting some wires or anything like that, but either way is fine. But from here it was pretty much plain sailing, I just clipped in the sides and put all the nuts back into place, but I did end up swapping from the OEM nuts in the wheel arch to just normal nuts and washers because I was having trouble stopping them from spinning on the studs that come in the bumper which was a little bit annoying. Okay, so the front bumper is now on, the back bumper is on from the last video. Now we've got one final piece to complete the TTRS body kit puzzle. And that is the spoiler. Now, there's a couple of ways we can attach this and Oh, I think I'm going to go for the easy way. So obviously this spoiler came off a red car, so I need to change the base on it for the black one. And there's two ways I can do that. I can either remove the old spoiler completely from the car, swap it over like that, or because this spoiler just bolts on in these two places, I'm thinking I might be able to do it on the car. So take the spoiler off there, use that as a template on here, drill the holes, and then just slot it on, bolt it in, put the spoiler down, and then code out the spoiler function to stop it coming back up. There might be a very good reason why I shouldn't do it that way, but I can't see why, so I'm just gonna do it, and if it works, it works. So I'm pretty sure this isn't the right way of doing it, but I can't see a reason why it wouldn't work, so let's give it a shot. So I take the base plate off the new spoiler, and then I'm able to use masking tape to mark off where the holes were on here, and transfer that over to my own spoiler on the black car. It's important here to mark the edges so you know that you're mounting the masking tape in the right place, but then you can just stab a hole and that gives you an exact idea of where you want to poke a drill through your spoiler. And once that's done, I carefully stick it onto my spoiler in exactly the right place. Okay, so now I've got my templates laid down, I just need to drill holes in my car. This is one of those points where you need to have faith in what you've done and that you've done it right and just go for it because 
well, there's no turning back after you've drilled a hole. Hopefully, if you do get it slightly wrong, there's a bit of adjustment, but there's not always, so you've got to be careful and make sure you get it right first time. So I start out by drilling a pilot hole to make sure that I'm in exactly the right place, and then I can move up to a bigger drill bit to take the size of the bolt which needs to go through it. Now, one thing I did notice on the red spoiler is that where the holes have been drilled, the spoiler had actually started corroding, so I'm guessing that means that the spoiler is actually made out of steel. So anyway, what I can do to combat that is then actually mask off the area and just spray a little bit of primer in there to try and stop that from happening on mine. So once that was done, I could then do a quick little test fit on the spoiler to make sure I'm happy with it, and there were some slight adjustments needed on the passenger side, so I had to make those holes slightly bigger, but it was nothing too bad. And once that was done, then I could bolt the spoiler in for the final time. This was probably the most fiddly bit because I hadn't given myself much room underneath the spoiler, but with a little bit of fiddling with an Allen key, we were there. And there is the TTRS spoiler officially fitted. The only thing I do need to do is try and code the car to see if I can make the spoiler come up at a higher speed, at like a speed that the car will never do. That way I can keep the spoiler button inside the car, so if I do need to quick release this spoiler and just pop this up and then undo these bolts, I can do that at the push of a button. From this angle it looks like some mad air break, but I do need to obviously retract the original spoiler, so let's do that. I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out, to be honest with you. It's quite nice as well, if I can keep that functionality to pop the spoiler up and down, then that'll mean that when it comes to wrapping the car or de-wrapping the car in the future, it's gonna be 10 times easier. So this is me from the future, and I'm just sat in the TT, just trying to have a look at the coding for the rear spoiler to try and stop that coming up at 74 mile an hour. So the ideal situation here would be to have it come up at a speed which the car will never do, and that way when I press the button, I can still access the bolts underneath, like I've already said, but I don't think that's an option on here. So under the coding section on the long coding helper on VAGCOM. On the third part here, we've got bit one, which says rear electric rear spoiler installed. So I should be able to now untick that box. So now the car thinks it's not got a spoiler fitted. Close this and then press do it. And let the, let the uh, thing do it. <laughs> and there we go, coding accepted, which now means that my car doesn't have a functioning electric spoiler. And all of that is without any hardware changes and should cause zero lights on the dash. So that's that sorted in the best way possible, I think. Let's go back to past Chris. Let's get the car outside and take a proper look at the finished TTRS body kit. I've been giving you the Well, the look of the TT has been absolutely transformed and is looking a lot, lot meaner. This front bumper is actually a replica one and it fits pretty well. I'm actually quite happy with that. It was about a third of the price of a genuine painted one with all the grills and everything. So I think that's actually a pretty good deal considering. And obviously, as we already know, the back bumper is genuine because they are much, much cheaper. And the spoiler is also a replica which we bolted onto the original spoiler base to save the fitment issues there. And that means I've managed to transform my Audi TTS into looking like a TTRS for just over a thousand pound, which I think is a pretty good deal. But the main thing bothering me now is the height of the car. It doesn't look right with these bumpers on and everything and these wheels. I think the tyres need to go a size bigger and we need to lower the car slightly as well and then it should look much better. But that is going to have to wait for another video. For now, don't forget to smash a like on this one, subscribe to the channel if you're not already and I'll catch you next time.